for I've been scrolling around YouTube looking at videos related to Dead Ahead and I cannot find a single guide for Dead Ahead's at all game mode. So aren't people making any? Well, I believe it is to this game having a built-in tutorial, which I suggest you try out if you still have no knowledge of the game controls. This tutorial will be talking about every single aspect you need to know about Deadhead's at all game mode. That includes the primary objective of the game mode, the ships and their weaponry, and a lot more. And like always, the timestamps are listed in the description of the video, in case you want to fast forward to a certain part you would like to know. Also, in the last video I made some mistakes. You can go ahead and skip to the part where I talk about them in the mistakes section of this video. Also, just a side note, this video may get outdated pretty quick, cause there's a chance at all will change entirely based on the community's opinions. And without further ado, let's get into it. Now the Atoll game mode is basically Dead Ahead's King of the Hill game mode, but unlike other game modes where almost every aspect is dedicated to the ships, this game mode is heavily reliant on land combat. The primary objective is to capture the point located in the bunker of Atoll. When you capture the point, the score for your team located on the top of your screen will increase. The score goes up 1 point every second the point is captured, and to win, your team's score must be 700. Basically, to win the game, your team must capture and hold the point for a full 700 seconds. Of course, there are two teams. The Orion fleet and the entire Samanda. Each team is given 4 spawn points. The landing craft dock, the aircraft carrier, the battleship, and of course, at all. However, in the start of the game, you can only spawn on the landing craft dock. As for the aircraft carrier, you will have to wait 240 seconds from the start of the game to spawn on it. As for the battleship, you have to wait 300 seconds. And to be able to spawn on at all, the point must currently be captured by your team. Otherwise, you'll be forced to spawn in a different spawn point. When the player spawns, the player has a choice to choose which spawn point to spawn in. This makes it relatively easy to switch to a different spawn point by just resetting and spawning on the spawn point of your choice. Forgive me if I'm saying spawn point too much. Obviously, if the aircraft carrier of your team gets sunk, the player won't be able to spawn in it. Now before we actually start talking about the toll and the ships, we must first talk about the armaments. Now if you didn't know, the dev form of the game gives a detailed explanation for each armament, but I'm gonna try my best to summarize it as simple as possible. First we have turrets. These are your main sources of damage against enemy ships, or can be used as artillery for bombarding at all. There are three batteries in the game, but the Atoll game mode only includes two batteries. That being the battleship battery and the secondary battery. The battleship battery in the Atoll game mode is different from the skirmish game mode because both batteries fire three shells. But also, the Orion Republic's shells do 9000 damage while the entire Imperium does 12000. Both of them fire around 3 rounds per minute. However, I do have to mention that the battleship battery is best used for artillery against the main island and not to sink the enemy ships. Since the only sinkable ships in the game mode are the vehicle landing craft, the personal landing craft, and the aircraft carrier, which most of them are most likely going to be dealt with with aircraft anyway. And as for the secondary batteries, they play little to no role in the Atoll game mode, but I might as well talk about them. They can come in at a single, dual mounts, or triple mounts. Each of the shells do 1500 damage and can sometimes even cause fires, which can do 50 damage per second if not put out using the fire extinguishers placed on the ships. You can equip the fire extinguishers by just walking close to the fire extinguisher and pressing Q. And the secondary batteries mostly see action through aircraft carrier versus aircraft carrier combat, or to sink the enemy landing craft using the aircraft carrier, which literally never happens. Because in a normal atoll match, you do not want to drive the aircraft carrier close to the atoll dock. I'll explain why later when I talk about each of the ships. Now for the controls of the turrets, it's pretty simple. WASD for traversing the turret, X for turning on reticle aim, which for the battleship battery's case will show you the location the shell would land since it's meant to be used for artillery. If the circle is red, that means the battleship battery is currently reloading. If it is green, it means it is ready to fire. R to reset the turret to its original position, F to fire, and shift to be able to aim slowly. Again, if you still haven't tried out the inbuilt tutorial of the game, please try it out, it'll help a ton. Keep in mind that turrets are also not accurate, especially when using the battleship battery, since you're basically firing from a billion studs away. So keep all of this in mind when using a turret, cause it's pretty obvious by now that if you do not hit your shot, you won't do any damage. Next we have anti-aircraft guns, commonly referred to as AA. These are used to target, well, aircraft and don't do an ounce of damage against enemy ships. Other than one shot in players if you manage to land a shot. Anti-aircraft guns also have bullet spread and bullet drop, so it might be relatively hard to aim and hit the player with it. There are three anti-aircraft guns in the game. Light anti-aircraft guns, medium anti-aircraft guns, and heavy airburst anti-aircraft guns. Light anti-aircraft guns do 25 damage per shell and fire around 450 rounds per minute per gun. It can come with either single or dual mount. Medium anti-aircraft guns do 50 damage per shell firing around 175 rounds per minute per gun. It can come in either twin, triple, or quad mount. And we have the heavy airburst anti-aircraft gun, which unlike the other anti-aircraft guns doesn't fire rapidly and instead fires 50 rounds per minute. And instead of only being able to do damage directly, which if you manage to land your shot you would do a whopping 150 damage, this gun does airburst damage, which if contacted with the plane parts will do a total of 10 damage per plane part each, which makes it super deadly towards aircraft. 
Controlling the entire aircraft is relatively simple by just using the mouse to aim and pressing left click to fire. There is also a trick where you can equip your binoculars while firing the entire aircraft to be able to focus on the enemy a lot easier. Also, keep in mind that your shells take time to reach the enemy, which means it would be a lot better if you aimed in the direction the enemy aircraft is heading towards, rather than putting your crosshair directly on the enemy while firing. Next we have torpedoes, which are basically bombs to travel through water. They travel at around 150 starts per second and they do a whopping 10,000 damage, so you do not want to get hit by a torpedo. Luckily, you still have a chance to dodge the torpedo if you are skilled enough to drive your way out of the torpedo's direction, since when the torpedo is deployed it will move in only one direction. When you deploy the torpedo, there will be an indicator to show the torpedo's location. The enemy on the other hand will only be able to see a trail of water left behind, so be cautious of anything you may see on the water for it could be a torpedo about to hit your ship and do massive amounts of damage. In the atoll game mode, there are torpedo bomber aircraft which are mostly tasked on taking down enemy ships rather than providing air support in atoll. In a normal atoll match, chances are you won't be moving any ships at all other than the landing craft vehicle when it is deployed. The torpedo also takes some time to reach the enemy ships, so you can try aiming in the direction the enemy ships are heading towards for a guaranteed hit. Next we have bombs, which are drawn from dive bomber aircraft and do a whopping 15,000 damage to enemy ships. Next we have rangefinders, which really enough are not mentioned in the game's tutorial despite playing quite a large role in the gameplay, so the point of a rangefinder is to find the range for a group of turrets. To use a rangefinder, you must get on the scene mostly located on the bridge of your ship you are on. However, some secondary rangefinders are located where the rangefinders are. Once you are on the rangefinder, you can move your mouse onto the ship you want to find the range of. Then you can click left click to find the range. Once you mark the range, other teammates will be able to see the area you marked allowing them to easily set the range for their batteries and land a clear shot. Keep in mind that it is best to keep marking the range since the distance between you and the enemy can change rapidly. Alright, so the only ship in at all with a rangefinder is the aircraft carrier since it has secondary guns. The battleship on the other hand doesn't have any custom main guns already have indicators to show where the shot would land by pressing the X button, and the secondary guns on the battleship literally serve no purpose. And like I said earlier, aircraft carrier versus aircraft carrier combat almost never happens, so it is really unlikely that the rangefinder will come into play in any way. And as for spotlights, they serve little to no purpose in at all. Look. I know I said that in the past two videos, and after the lighting update, they are sometimes necessary in the polar map, but this is the time I actually mean it, cause well, at all it's always day. And finally, we have rocket pods, which are placed on the landcraft dog of both teams. Same as the battleship battery, they are used for artillery against at all. They can only be used when the enemy captures the point, meaning if you are on the rocket pod and your team captures the point, it'll automatically dismount you. The rocket pod fires a total of 20 rockets and takes one full minute to reload, and while extremely inaccurate, it can be able to clear a large area and assist your team in capturing the point. And also like the battleship battery, you can press X for turning on reticle aim, which like the battleship battery, will show the location the shell would land. If the circle is red, that means it's currently reloading. If it is green, it means it's ready to fire. As of now, Atoll only has one map, which is just one huge island surrounded by four smaller islands, which barely serve any purpose to be honest. Of course, all the action happens in the main island, which has some secondary batteries around the edges of the beach. However, they are purely cosmetic and cannot be used. Now the spawn points for each team are placed inside the hangar for the specific team. Basically, this is Orion's hangar and this is Antares' hangar. Of course, like I said earlier, to be able to spawn in them, the point must currently be captured by your team, which is located inside the bunker of Atoll. There is also a spawn for the medium bomber inside both teams' hangars. You can press the button to spawn the medium bomber, however the medium bomber that spawns will belong to the team that is currently in control of the point. Basically, if the point is held by the Orion Republic, and an entire player presses the spawn button, an Orion medium bomber will spawn anyway, which means if your team is not in control of the point, do not spawn a medium bomber or you are just giving the enemy an advantage. Also, the medium bomber cannot be spawned if the point is not currently captured by any team. The hangar can also protect you from incoming artillery bombardment, and the hangar does have some aircraft and vehicles. However, they are purely cosmetic and cannot be mounted, though they can still serve as cover from enemy fire. Next we have the runway, which is by far the most exposed area on the entire island, so an easy way to not die is just not to get on the runway. The runway is also the area where the medium bomber resupplies and spawns, visible in the line of fire of three anti-aircraft guns. Yeah, there are three anti-aircraft guns on the runway. There's a heavy airburst anti-aircraft gun, which is good at its job of taking down enemy aircraft, and sometimes players. But the real gems are the medium anti-aircraft guns on the sides of both hangars. This gun is actually more powerful than you think, because while you could use it for its intended purpose, which is taking down enemy aircraft, it is incredibly deadly for enemy players and enemy vehicles. Since the runway is an extremely open area, and the anti-aircraft guns do one-shot players, and while they might not be the most accurate and have some bullet drop, you can basically stop an entire enemy push and take down enemy troop carriers by just aiming the anti-aircraft guns onto a group of enemies, and you can also take down enemy medium bombers, though you can still learn from flanking enemies, enemy snipers, and especially enemy artillery. 
but most of the time it doesn't even matter because you can just respawn in the hangar and walk to the anti-aircraft gun in less than 10 seconds and continue shooting. Though keep in mind that if the enemy is approaching the point from the other side, it's less likely any player is going to show up on the runway. The bunker has a total of 3 rooms, the main section, the console room, and the pillbox room. The main section has two entrances and contains the point that must be captured. It is surrounded by some sandbags and some crates, mainly there to provide cover. There is also a tunnel that leads to the console room. Now the console room is filled with servers, but you can't actually interact with them. Weirdly enough, they are pretty effective in being hiding spots, you see most players not checking the tunnel often. The tunnel also extends to the pillbox room. The pillbox room is a pretty good area to fire from due to the entire runway being visible in your line of fire. However, you can still take damage from enemy players, so it's best to take cover from time to time. The pillbox room is also destructible if hit by any size artillery. When it is destroyed, it will become an entrance allowing players to climb up and enter the bunker through the tunnel. Next to the bunker are also some watchtowers overlooking each side and also a control tower, which you can climb up and snipe enemy players from above. On the surface of the pillbox room, there is also a medium anti-aircraft gun. This can often be used to shoot down vehicles from the opposing team that somehow make their way to the top. Of course, if the pillbox room is destroyed, the medium anti-aircraft gun will go down as well. Now the living blocks don't really see much action since most of the area is kind of useless, except for the goose, and it's not really a good position to be holding, and more of an area for your team to approach the point. Same goes for the storage building next to Antares' spawn. Next we have the forest, which basically take up the entirety of a toll. The forests are a pretty good position to catch your enemies by surprise, because most players let their guard down when walking through the forest, since their mind is more focused on getting to the point rather than shooting their gun at enemy players. And also there are some heavy airburst anti-aircraft guns, which are of course used to shoot down enemy aircraft, located here, 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 and here. There is also a noticeable hill in these three sections. The hills are generally hard to walk past if you are trying to get to the point because enemy players can shoot you down from the end of the hill and can easily take cover, while you are standing there in the entire line of fire. Which is also why landing here is the best option, since it doesn't take long to get to the point and because there are no hills you need to walk past. Then finally, we have the communications tower, which is a really good sniping area, depending on the gun you're using. Yeah, if you're not using a rifle, just don't get on the tower or you'll literally hit nothing. Though keep in mind if you are going to take position on the tower, try not to alert too many enemies of your presence or you're going to get gunned down pretty quick or die of fall damage. Now if you manage to get on one of the landing crafts, it's highly recommended that you land on the west landing spot for these reasons. Number 1. Like I mentioned earlier, there's no rough terrain or anything hard for you to traverse to if you are heading towards the point. Number 2. It is by far the shortest path to the point. And number 3, the area is filled with some trees and some areas for you to take cover, unlike the runway, where you are highly exposed. And now that we finally talked about the atoll itself, we can now talk about the actual ships. Now if you haven't noticed by now, the ships in each team are actually different from one another in terms of looks and weaponry, though the stats balance each other out, so each ship has basically the same firepower. First off we have the landing craft dock classified in the hot classification system as LCD. You might want to remember this because people use this system a whole ton in the game chat. The landing craft dock serves as the main spawn point at the start of the game and the one used for entering the other landing craft. It has an infinite health pool and cannot be destroyed. Which makes sense because it's basically impossible to retake the point without getting on the landing craft dock. You also cannot move it. The landing craft docks for both teams don't really have a name, but they consist of the same armament being one rocket pod. The landing craft dock has a total of 4 personal landing craft spawns and 1 vehicle landing craft spawn. If they have not yet been deployed, you can press E to deploy them. There are also buttons for you to press which will teleport you to the landing craft dock of your choice. If the vehicle landing craft or a personal landing craft gets sunk, it will regenerate next to the landing craft dock where it was originally spawned in the start of the game. Next we have the vehicle landing craft classified in the whole classification system as VLC. The vehicle landing craft serves as possibly the ideal area to spawn in when taking a toll, due to it containing 2 troop carriers which are valuable assets to your team. If the troop carriers get destroyed, they are regenerated on the vehicle landing craft. However, this makes the vehicle landing craft a keen target for enemy aircraft, which is why it is also armed with a fire extinguisher and anti-aircraft guns. For the Orion Republic, their VLC is armed with 4 twin light anti-aircraft guns. As for the entire Imperium, their VLC is armed with 1 twin light anti-aircraft gun overlooking the front and 1 twin medium anti-aircraft gun overlooking the back. You can teleport to the vehicle landing craft by getting on the landing craft dock and pressing the vehicle landing craft button. As for the troop carriers themselves, they serve as transportation for your team and have a pretty good armament consisting of an M2 mounted heavy machine gun. It has a total of 10 seats if you include the machine gun mount and the driver's seat. To mount the driver's seat, you must press E to mount it. Once you are on it, use WASD to control the vehicle. To exit, basically press spacebar. As for the machine gun, to mount the gun, you basically have to sit on it. 
This machine gun is actually really powerful due to it having a total of 50 rounds literally taking 4 shots to kill an enemy. And the mount itself is provided with some pretty good cover in the front, though it does have its weaknesses. You can get mowed down pretty easily if an enemy player manages to get behind your gun and shoot you down, due to you basically being stationary, and the gun taking a whopping 6 to 7 seconds to reload. Oh yeah, enemy players can also take over the gun if they manage to get on it. Though this can be dealt with pretty easily by just exiting the driver's mount and quickly killing the enemy player which is just a sitting duck. Now talking about the troop carrier's health, it's pretty okay. It has a total of 500 health but cannot be damaged by enemy players' firearms, but can be damaged by things like anti-aircraft, turrets, rocket pods, bombs, or even fighters. To put it simply, you basically have 5 seconds before you get annihilated by enemy anti-aircraft guns, which is why it is a huge mistake if you take the troop carriers on a ride where there is a visible line of fire from enemy anti-aircraft guns. Though, as long as you stay away from those and don't get hit by any artillery, you're basically invincible, cause it's not like the enemy players can retaliate with their firearms in any way. The least they can do is get on the high ground to avoid being road killed since the troop carrier does a terrible job in climbing slopes. Oh yeah, did I mention a troop carrier can road kill? You can do this by driving over enemy players which will insta-kill them in possibly the most gruesome way possible. With this insta-kill mechanic and a firearm proof vehicle, you will be a force to reckon with. Just, you know, don't go near anti-aircraft guns or you'll explode and kill everyone on board in the process. Also, the worst possible case when using the troop carrier is getting stuck, because not only is it now undrivable, but it can't get destroyed, which means it can't get regenerated on the vehicle landing craft either. As for the final landing craft, we have the smallest one being the personal landing craft, classified in the whole classification system as LC. There are a total of 4 personal landing crafts for each team, and like the vehicle landing craft, if it ever gets destroyed, it will get regenerated on the landing craft dock. The personal landing craft for both teams are basically the same having a total of 12 seats including the driver's seat and the light anti-aircraft gun to target enemy aircraft. Like I said earlier, you can teleport to the personal landing craft by getting on the landing craft dock and pressing the personal landing craft button of your choice. Next we have the battleship, classified as BB. For the Orion Republic, their battleship is nicknamed Mesa. As for the entire Imperium, their battleship is nicknamed Omicron. Both of them are armed with 3 triple battleship batteries and some secondary batteries which I won't bother to mention since they never see any actual action. Like the rocket pods located on the landing craft dock, it acts more like an artillery piece to assist your teammates on the atoll rather than an actual ship. Same as the landing craft dock, the battleship is also immovable and cannot be damaged. At the start of the game, you need to wait a total of 300 seconds aka 5 minutes to be able to spawn in it. Once you spawn in it, it will immediately teleport you to one of its main batteries. Of course, you can still jump off, but there isn't much to do on the battleship anyway, other than firing onto the atoll. Unlike the rocket pod, if the point is captured by your team, you won't get dismounted from the gun, but rather, you'll be unable to fire it until the point is captured by the opposing team. Also, if all the guns on the battleship battery are fully mounted, you won't be able to spawn on the battleship since it would be full. The battleship overall isn't exactly a necessary ship to be used on the atoll, especially if your team has the upper hand. Though sometimes, it can be a really useful piece of artillery and can assist your teammates by eliminating multiple enemy players. And finally, we have the aircraft carrier classified as CV. Not AC, CV. It has a health pool of 60,000 health. For the Orion Republic, the aircraft carrier is nicknamed Rigel. The Rigel is armed with 2 double secondary batteries, 6 single secondary batteries, 4 single heavy airbus AAs, 1 quad medium AA and 12 double light AAs. As for the entire Imperium, the aircraft carrier is nicknamed Scorpius Alpha. The Scorpius Alpha is armed with 2 double secondary batteries, 6 single secondary batteries, 4 single heavy airbus AAs, 1 triple medium AA and 12 twin medium AAs. There is a secondary rangefinder in the bridge of both aircraft carriers. By the stats and qualities, you can easily tell the ship is not meant for ship versus ship combat but rather maintaining air support. However, the ship does surprisingly well with anti-aircraft, the Rigel having 11 mounts dedicated to just anti-aircraft weaponry. But this ship is of course meant to maintain air superiority, being the supply of ammunition for all aircraft. If the aircraft carrier on your team goes down, all the aircraft in your team are basically useless without bombs and ammunition. Okay, so in the earlier version of the script, I was gonna talk about how sinking the aircraft carrier is kind of a good thing because more people are on the toll. But then they ended up updating it so that sinking the aircraft carrier results in your team receiving 100 points. So now there's gonna be that one guy on the aircraft carrier who's just sitting on the anti-aircraft gun waiting for the enemy aircraft to appear. So uh, yeah, just protect your aircraft carrier. As for the aircraft itself, Unlike the skirmish game mode, the aircraft carrier contains 8 attack aircraft, 6 dive bombers, 4 torpedo bombers and 5 fighters. To spawn a plane, head near the bridge of the carrier. There will be an area displaying 4 buttons for you to press. Press Q on the aircraft you want to deploy. This won't work if the deployment time is on cooldown. By doing so, the aircraft will spawn on the deck and you will be teleported onto the aircraft. Then press E and you will be on the aircraft. 
Surprisingly, the inbuilt tutorial doesn't teach you how to use the aircraft, but instead, when you get on an aircraft in game, there will be a list of controls listed in the left side of your screen. Basically, press P to start the engine. Note that when you are flying, do not press P again or it will disable your engines causing you to fall into the depths below. You can press Q and E to roll left and right, S and W to pitch up and down, A and D to yaw left and right, shift to increase speed, control to decrease speed, R to resupply when you are near your team's aircraft carrier, as for the medium bomber, it supplies in the runway. Keep in mind that you do not have to land on the aircraft carrier or the runway to resupply. All you have to do is fly close to your team's aircraft carrier. B to drop ordnance, which works for the dive bomber, the medium bomber, and the torpedo bomber. X to enter crosshair mode, which works for the attack aircraft and fighter. And G to turn the gears on and off. Note that you'll want to turn the gears off when flying and turn the gears on when you're about to land on the carrier or the runway. You can land by turning on the gears and pressing P to turn off the engine just as you are flying on the surface. Now that we've finally talked about the controls, we can start talking about each of the aircraft. Starting with the dive bomber. The dive bomber is mounted with a bomb and travels around 200 studs per second. Now the job of a dive bomber is to, well, dive and bomb, as you're more likely to drop the bomb in the direction you are aiming, instead of just flying by and dropping it. Also make sure that when you drop the bomb, pitch up as much as you can so you don't ram your aircraft onto the ship or the water. After you do so, return to your aircraft carrier to resupply and continue the cycle of dive bombing over and over, and also be aware of anti-aircraft, since you do need to enter line of fire from enemy guns to drop the bombs. Next we have the Torpedo Bomber. The Torpedo Bomber is mounted with a torpedo and is slightly slower than a bomber, traveling at around 175 studs per second. The job of a Torpedo Bomber is similar to that of a dive bomber, but instead of bombs, you drop torpedoes. To drop the torpedo, you must be at an altitude roughly around the superstructure of a ship. Then press B, then the torpedo will be launched. Keep in mind that the torpedoes still take time to reach enemy ships, so you still have to lead your shot onto a position that will for sure hit the enemy ship. Once you do so, return to your aircraft carrier to resupply and continue the cycle. Also, the shore of the atoll is shallow, so you cannot deploy your torpedo there. If you did, it would just explode immediately. So sadly, as a torpedo bomber, you cannot deal with any land units. Next we have the attack aircraft. The attack aircraft is mounted with 6 rockets, each doing around 1000 damage. The rockets can also cause fires, doing 50 damage per second. It travels at around 200 stots per second. It is best used against weak ships that can go down easily, like the weaker landing craft, since the fires are relatively hard to put out, and the missiles can also take down a handful of players on the enemy ship. You can even use this to one-shot enemy aircraft if you're feeling like it. Since the missiles basically insta-kill any kind of aircraft, it can also be used to provide air support in at all by firing the missiles at enemy players. Though, keep in mind the missiles are not accurate, because the farther you are from your target, the less likely you're going to hit an enemy player. And overall, it's pretty risky to drive your aircraft in a low altitude, especially in at all, because you risk colliding with the island itself. Next, we have the fighter. The fighter is mounted with a gun in its front, being able to shoot 500 rounds per minute, doing 25 damage per shell and a whopping speed of 300 studs per second. The fighter is obviously meant for plane versus plane combat due to its speed and its weaponry. Of course, its gun only holds 400 rounds, so you'll still have to resupply in your aircraft carrier. When flying the fighter, you'll want to stay as far from enemy ships as possible, since you basically can't do anything against them other than kamikaze or I guess you can try to shoot down the players on board? It's just really risky where you are meant to be shooting down enemy aircraft since the fighters are key to maintaining air superiority. You can also shoot the players on a tour with the fighters since the gun does insta-kill, as well as shoot down the enemy troop carriers. Also, the fighter can sometimes be used to take down the landing craft, since the gun of the fighter does some damage to enemy ships, and the landing craft doesn't really have much health. But beware of anti-aircraft guns, because each of the landing craft is loaded with one. And finally, we have the medium bomber, which is spawned in the runway and has a 240 second cooldown, aka 4 minutes. The medium bomber is slightly slower than the other aircraft, travelling at 160 shots per second at max, though it has 10 times the hit points of all the other aircraft, and can drop a whopping 10 bombs in rapid succession, which do 4000 damage each. Yep, you can deal 40,000 damage in less than 3 seconds. It means you can do this. And if the fires are not dealt with, yep, you can sink the enemy aircraft carrier in just one flight. And that isn't all of it. It's also mounted with a 20mm MG at the rear top of the aircraft, which can be mounted by another player and has infinite ammo. Which means you have a portable light anti-aircraft gun on your aircraft, which can also one-shot players. Though you do have to be at a certain angle to be able to use the gun. But of course, the weakness of the medium bomber is the size of it and its speed. But to be honest, its armor and its health does make up for its weaknesses. Anyways, in the last video where I talked about the Dreadnought game mode, I made some mistakes, which thankfully you guys pointed out. 
Alright, so number one, heavy airbus anti-aircraft guns, or FLAX, and the fighter guns do damage against enemy ships. Number two, torpedoes from the torpedo launcher do 5,000 damage per torpedo each, and the torpedo from the torpedo bomber does 10,000 damage, and that's all the mistakes. Anyway, so thanks to everybody who pointed out all the mistakes I made in the video, as you are helping me make better content by doing so. If you managed to find any mistakes in this video, it would be greatly appreciated if you pointed them out in the comments. Congratulations, you practically now know everything about Dead Ahead's whole game mode. From the objective, to the ships, to the weaponry, I hope this guy was someone helpful to you and fun to watch. If you would like to see more content made by me, feel free to click subscribe and press the like button. See ya.